This is from a private message I received on YouTube from Harold Ryder. 03088. Hey Devin, I enjoy your videos. I don't have a Mazda, but my dad owns a 96 MPV. I am more of a Honda guy. Anyway, I'm a DIY guy like yourself and I'm interested in the tools you use. Perhaps you can make a toolbox tool video. Just a thought, maybe others would enjoy it as well. Uh, that seems like a fairly simple request. <laughs> you know, it's not labor intensive. No one's asking me how do I install a turbo or anything like that, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I can definitely make a video on that. As most people will have seen when they watch my videos, I usually keep my toolbox there. And there are my jack stands, a uh, half inch socket set. Well, I'll pull out my toolbox and show you what I got. These are my, uh, my snips, big scissors. Uh, these things are awesome for junkyards, by the way. Cutting through uh, wiring harnesses to rip stuff out. They make really quick work of everything else. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Look at the assault weapons book behind him. Why does he have assault weapons? My neighbor gave me that. Okay, he's a gun enthusiast. Leave me alone. And here's a tape measure, just in case I need to measure anything longer than 10 inches long. You know, you need tape measures to compare that against. 90 degree angle pliers, love those things. Uh, and I have used these to take out many snap rings, especially these came uh, in handy when we were doing the uh, short shifter, ND28 short shift, uh, B&M short shifter. Muffler sealant, got to have that. Torx bits, you, you will need a set of Torx bits. Uh, these have the hole in the middle. There are ones that do not, and those are called star bits, and these are Torx bits. T6, T7, T8, T25. I don't know why they use T, T for Torx, I guess. I don't know, if you've watched Real Fixes Real Fast video, he has a long pair of straight needle nose pliers, and he uses those to put the spring back onto the timing belt tensioner. So this is, I got this specifically for when it comes time to do that. And yes, I still have plans to do that. Standard US Imperial size, fractional reserve kind of crap. Nothing special, I guess this is for cleaning battery posts. You put that on top of the post and you can clean it and it does get it really nice shiny silver again. Um, and then it also comes, comes with a brush to clean the uh, female ends inside of a terminal. <coughs> So that's a neat tool that I have, and I really like that. can recommend everyone everyone pick up one of those. It does come in handy. Uh, Andy gave me these uh, as a present. I haven't been able to use these too much, but these are ratcheting wrenches. And these are standard size, and unfortunately, again, um, just like these wrenches, most of the stuff on my car, on the Mazda, and the same as yours, Hero Rider, I would imagine most of the stuff on your Honda is going to be... Um, in metric. If you're into DIY stuff for your cars and you own an import, put away your standard size wrenches and go buy a set of metric wrenches. They don't use standard size anything, any bolts, any nuts, anything on imports. It's all metric. This little sucker has come in handy more than a couple times. The carpet cutting tool. You stick in the carpet and it rips along. Uh, it, it's supposed to rip seams. It's a seam cutter, but I have no idea where I picked this up. I think this might have been my dad's. have a set of Allen keys. Actually, I have two sets, black and yellow. Uh, O2 sensor socket. If you're going to do DIY stuff, you're going to need an O2 sensor socket. There's a wire that comes off the O2 sensor, and you can't put a socket over a wire. And this hole allows you to do that. So I uh, recommend that you pick up uh, an O2 sensor socket. If you're going to be doing your own DIY car stuff, you eventually you're going to run into an issue where you're going to have to remove your O2 sensor. And this is the, the tool for that job. I don't really have anything outlandishly wild, uh, neat tools, I guess, you know, paneled clip tools. Uh, you can pick a whole set of those up for $7 from Amazon. Highly recommend those. Little vice grips. And these are what I use for hose, hose clamps. I got the idea from Eric the Car Guy, who has uh, rubber on his. And I just have a small, much smaller version of that. Um, really fine pliers for picking at electronic parts, like um, straightening pins and things like that. These are actually for uh, computer uses. Uh, let's see, I've got a huge pry bar, need a, need a crowbar. This is probably one of my favorite tools. This is my extendable half inch breaker bar. So it basically has, it has a cheater bar built into it. And this was actually a uh, property of uh, Florida Power and Light. They had these, I got this legally, I got it absolutely legally, <laughs> but they used to attach these inside of the electrical boxes that you might see out in your neighborhood. And these come inside of them. And I know someone that works for FP, FP&L 
and they eventually phased that part out where they didn't they no longer needed these half inch wrenches inside the boxes and they gave them away and he was able to secure two of them and nd28 actually got one and i got one big allen keys you're going to need something like this i believe it's an eight millimeter key for your calipers it's probably going to be the same thing on hondas and most imports so you're going to need a set of those or you can just buy an individual key that you need but i wanted a, a full set uh, nice pry bar as you notice pry bars and pry tools are a common theme in diy car repair <laughs> Oh, how's the saying go? If you can't fix it with a hammer, use duct tape. That's pretty much how it goes sometimes. Uh, robo grips. I, I could not live without my Craftsman Robo grips. These things are amazing. You can open you open your hand up and you can put a lot of pressure and a lot of force down at the uh, the end. These things are awesome. Really nothing nothing too special. You know, I have more pliers and I guess yeah, big socket axle socket i had to go out and buy that one individually uh just assorted vice grips screwdrivers chisels yeah that's pretty much it for the toolbox i don't have a lot of specialized tools that regular auto mechanics have um for the diy you can probably get away with this stuff uh, another thing that you will need that i can highly recommend is a half inch breaker bar now I have my extendable half inch breaker bar that I just showed you, but before I got that, I was actually I actually got this. And that is a monster. A half inch breaker bar is what you need. And do not go with a quarter inch breaker bar or a three eighths inch breaker bar. And you'll see those in stores. They're they're small. They're about half the size of the of this. Those do not provide enough torque to get off like a wheel you need half inch. I actually broke my quarter inch one at a junkyard trying to get a, a rusted wheel off. So I ended up having to go back and get a half inch. And this half inch has been just absolutely amazing. I love my half inch breaker bar. Let's see, drill bits. Now I would recommend if you get into DIY automotive repair, a good socket set is the first thing that you should get. I would recommend that you start with a half inch socket set. If you can find a half inch socket set like this, it's probably going to cost you $100. However, it's well worth it. And most of the socket sets like that are laid out like this from a major manufacturer, this one happens to be Husky, are lifetime warranted. I actually broke this little adapter piece, 3 8 inch adapter. Matter of fact, I broke this when I broke my quarter inch breaker bar. This was on the end of the quarter inch breaker bar. Sheared this off and then I broke the quarter inch breaker bar without it. Yeah, that was a bad day at the junkyard. So I broke this and I called Husky up and I said, hey, I broke this, I need a new one. How do I get a new one? And they sent me a new one in the mail. I didn't have to send them back the old one or anything, they just sent me a new one in the mail. So that was awesome and I love Husky because of it and I can recommend Husky tools because of it. I absolutely love Husky because of that. I would have been screwed without that because you do need that every once in a while. Not, not too often, but every once in a while. So uh, because of that, I went and I picked up a, uh, a new set of gloves and I ended up going back to Home Depot where I got the, the Husky set and ended up picking up a set of Husky gloves because of it. And I do love the snap-on gloves. I'm very particular about having nitrile tipped gloves like this. And the Husky gloves were the closest thing I could find. This, these have nitrile tips on the gloves. And I like the palm grip. And then also I have I like the knuckle buster feature on these gloves. So uh, I ended up picking those gloves up. Caliper, cleaners. Those are just your basic munchy, monkey wrench hitters and cutters. That's my spark tester. That's uh, a thing that I never use. I just hang it up there and ignore it pretty much. That's a steering wheel from a fifth generation Mazda 626 black, um, which I would have sent to uh, Bickett but he said he needed a, uh, a tan one or a, a gray one. I love this thing. This only costs 25 bucks from Kmart. I use that inside the car when I'm vacuuming and detailing. I'll just throw that right inside the back seat and I'll vacuum out the back and, and the front and all that. Uh, and I recently removed all of the tint from the back window. That's why it's so nice and clean in there. And then uh, after I scraped off all the tint, I uh, went at it with the vacuum cleaner and sucked all that stuff up. So. 
Love my vacuum cleaner. This is an oscillating air fan I picked up from Home Depot for I think it was $25, $30, something like that. I just wanted something cheap. Andy left the creeper here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of creepers. Here's a, here's a lesson on creepers. Here is my jack. I got this for about $90 from Harbor Freight. Great jack. Harbor Freight makes some great jacks. I love that jack. Professional mechanics usually have professional level jacks. My Harbor Freight jack only goes up to 14 inches. Those will only go up to about 16 inches. So no matter what, I've only got about 14 inches. That's a little more than a foot to get under the car and work. So I am very close to the ground when I get under there. Now you can get higher jack stands. You can get a jack that'll go up to 23 inches. Mine only goes up to 14. Big, big difference. How high I can raise the car up, I can't get under there with a creeper. You see how that works? That only raises my car up 14 inches, so it's not enough to get under there. And when I'm under there, I like having the leverage of being able to push off on, on the ground. If you're on a creeper, you're slipping and sliding under there like you're uh, like a b-boy on cardboard. You know, you, that's great for b-boys, but when you need leverage, why would you put yourself in a device that makes you slip and slide around? The only people that I think should have a, a creeper are people that are on their backs all the time, which are basically prostitutes, and I'm not. So um, I know Andy left that here in the hopes that I would use it. I'm never going to use that creeper as long as my jack only goes 14 inches up in the air. If I have a jack that will lift my car 19 to 23 inches up in the air, and I have plenty of clearance to lift my car up in the air, yeah, then maybe I might get under there and so that I can slide out and slide in and slip the wall around and do a whole bunch of stuff real fast. My car only goes 14 inches up in the air. There's just no need for it. So that's basically my toolbox. Then back here I have uh, well my soldering station, soldering equipment. Uh, this is my amplifier that drives my speakers. Got lots and lots of paint. I love painting stuff. You're going to need a drain pan. There's no way around that. And you're also going to need something to put your old coolant or oil into so I have three large containers for that which I recently picked up uh, obviously I have my bench grinder well that's pretty much it for this side let's go over to the other side I'll show you what's over here car parts car parts car parts old busted car parts 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 more car parts project car parts car parts car parts old springs and here I have some more tools oh wait these are all OEM car parts you know stuff like an old transaxle range sensor math sensor brackets IAT sensor oh, look tan shift knob stuff like that these are all this is my OEM parts drawer and back here is actually the the heater core that uh, racer X sent me my heater core is still working, so that's just a spare heater core, I guess. Uh, let's see, we got a compression tester. You're gonna definitely, if you wanna do DIY stuff, you need a compression tester. Torque wrench, strap wrench. This is all my um, sealant and RTV stuff. Fuel pressure gauge. Uh, I also have a test light for electronic testing. Steering wheel puller. Turkey baster for brake fluid. Turkey baster is great for getting out excess fluid. Uh, let's see, car parts. Oh yeah, car parts, car parts, car parts. Lighting, definitely gonna want a work light. Uh, and these are actually extension cords in rolls that you pull and you roll out, really neat thing. If you have an oil pan, and I, here's another oil pan and another oil pan, uh, you're gonna need something to put that in when you take it to wherever you're going to dump that out at. Usually a, a refuse place, a recycling center of some kind for coolant recycling, engine oil recycling, etc. So I went to Home Depot and I got some gallon drums. There's three different ones for three different fluids. Uh, brake fluid, coolant, and engine oil. So when I take those to go get recycled, I'll dump all my stuff into one of those and then take it out. And it has a top on it that seals. It's not waterproof, but it's, a, it's something and it seals. That way, if you're driving and it drops over, uh, you're not going to have such a bad day. It'll still leak out, but, you know, it won't pour out. That's pretty much the gist of what to expect as a DIY guy. Uh, I don't have anything crazy. I don't have a crane. I don't have a hoist. I don't have any of that stuff. Uh, that would just take up room, and you can usually find someone 
to to borrow one from uh air compressor i would love to have an air compressor as a diy guy absolutely air compressors would be uh very good but i can't afford an air compressor those things are you know they're like 500 dollars for an air compressor and i don't have that kind of money to splurge on an air compressor when i have a whole box full of manual hand tools and one benefit of manual hand tools that you're not going to get with an air compressor is strength this stuff this doing this kind of stuff by hand makes you strong it's a workout and i love that i like my workout <laughs> i like it you know i'll use my breaker bar to get off my lug nuts i like that it's a workout it gets me strong strong like bull another oh yeah another neat tool is uh these camping stools i use that to actually do andy's uh headlight lenses when i restored his headlight lenses it's great for stuff like that where you're doing body work now i haven't used it a lot for body work but you know Stools can come in handy so that you're not breaking your back leaning over all the time. I actually have two stools so that when Andy comes over, I have one for him too. There's all my power tools that I never use. Uh, Dremel, car polisher, battery recharger, very handy battery recharger, uh, vacuum gauge, Dremel. Oh, if you don't have a Dremel, get a Dremel. They're freaking awesome. They're better than cutoff wheels. As you've seen, we cut um, lowering springs, which are freaking hard metal with the Dremel. We cut those lowering springs with the Dremel when a huge Milwaukee Sawzall wouldn't even do the job. A Dremel will replace a Sawzall. So Harrow Rider, those are pretty much all of the tools that I have at my disposal as a DIYer. Definitely not professional shop quality stuff. You know, it's all cheap. You know, just get my hands on the cheapest crap that I can find that will do the job um, and will last a little while. There's some stuff that I've used that have broke the first time I used it. Well, there, there is a difference in quality and price, I should say. You don't want to go too low, otherwise it's not going to last. If people know that you can fix stuff when it's broken, no matter what it is, they'll come to you. I have no idea what it is. It's, it's just weird. And I started out fixing computers. Now I'm getting into fixing cars. I don't want to fix cars for a living. I do want to fix computers for a living. I like computers a heck of a lot more than I like cars. And computers are my real passion and no one gets to see that kind of stuff because it's a little bit harder to film coding on your computer. Well, I hope I've answered your question and uh, you can see what kind of tools I have to make my world a better place and to fix things that are broken. So I would like to thank you, Tom, for suggest making a video suggestion um, that I could shoot in relative ease without like a major effort. So. Thanks, Tom. Hope you liked the video. Cool.